Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Didi Kanku with your host, David. Today, we have a very special guest. He is a very experienced HR specialist and psychosynthetic coach. His name is uh, Coach Supriyadi. So welcome, Coach Supriyadi. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm glad to hear with you and looking forward to discuss more uh, some something that we can uh, share with the listeners. Absolutely. We're very glad to have you and uh, thank you for your time to come on and share some of your experience and knowledge with our listeners. So for some of the listeners and audience who don't uh, aren't really familiar with you. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Okay. Well, actually, I'm a clinical psychologist, but I'm wow. working in an industrial setting as a HR practitioner. Um, right now, uh, I'm holding a position like, uh, as a people and development uh, wow. in one of the big company, uh, food and beverage company. And in the other side, I'm also having a career, building my career as a life coach. I'm living in Yogyakarta actually, but working in Jakarta. So I'm always um, moving from Jakarta to Yogyakarta in every, every week. But, but in, in the pandemic condition, it, it can be happens, you know. Right. Uh, I learned about, uh, it starts in 2010, when I first met with uh, transpersonal psychology. That's the first uh, time I know about the psychosynthesis, actually. And I learned from uh, three gurus. Uh, one is Margaret Ruffler from Germany. And the second is um, maybe in Indonesia. Uh, everyone knows about Dr. Hendro Parbo and also uh, mm, Professor yes. Parcarini uh, from Gajamada University. Wow. I learned a lot about the transpersonal from them and I'm very interested. And then in 2010, uh, I took a course uh, about the transpersonal psychology almost three years until 2013 wow. to get the certified as a transpersonalist. Mm. Uh, it's a long journey. And after that, I'm very excited to do more with the transpersonal psychology and especially in, in psychosynthesis. Wow. Your, uh, your journey is, uh, wow. Your journey is very comprehensive. And it seems like uh, from the sound of it, like your journey has always been related to psychology and people development. You even work now as a HR practitioner. Um, what got you interested in the beginning to start psychology? You said that you started with clinical psychology. Yeah. yeah what what yeah. was your motivation when you started that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... May I say it's it's an accident <laughs> 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 because my parents uh, actually uh, drive me to take the uh, psychology because my parents uh, saw that psychology in the future is very very uh, uh, very very uh, needed. It's mm. very promising uh, profession. Yeah. So, well, I think right now with this te pandemic, it's definitely very needed for yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, but in the other side, I, 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 I see that in psychology, in, in clinical psychology, more focused on a mental health issue. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I need something that is very different, more positivistic. Mm. Not seeing a person as a an object that they got uh, diagnosed with a mental illness. Mm. I I totally relate with you because I also studied clinical psychology. Wow. Um, and I actually in the end became a teacher, an educator, because 
same same reason as you just mentioned there was a lot of um negativity uh and help me really? and that energy kind of affected me yeah yeah so I, I agree with it I, I totally relate to that yeah it's very exhausted actually uh helping people with mental illness so right. uh i just that's why i just to work in an industrial setting because mm. i thought it i can help more people in yeah. a just like a community setting in industry rather than meet with people one on one to to do something a therapeutic uh, process so that's why that's the reason why i that's the reason why i took uh, why i decide sorry why i decide to work as a hr in in a corporation Mm, so were a lot of the skills that you learned as a clinical psychologist applicable when you went into HR? Of course, it's fully applicable uh, when I'm working as an HR, especially the way of thinking, especially the way of thinking, uh, because we we'll, in, in clinical setting, we learn how to diagnose and then find the root cause. And right. it, it's something that normal uh, happens in in a corporation and the the special things uh, when the, we are we are clinician uh, jump in the corporation actually we can understand the human relation dynamic in an organization setting and also how the personality uh, impact to the relation and how they perform because of uh, their personalities uh, in, in a problem or something. Uh, so we can address and understand how to help uh, the employee. Mm, right, right. Wow. So, so, and then your next part of your journey, you actually continued your development into transformational psychology. Yep. And and you you had uh, you mentioned uh, three very uh, famous um, I guess practitioners or trainers or gurus as you mentioned. Um, how did you find those people to help mentor you, and what lessons uh, could you share that really resonated with you from them? Okay. Uh... That teach uh, that touch me uh, taught me about uh, that people can always grow, right? People can always change, and every single person uh, has their own capability that has their own potency to do something that they want to achieve. Mm. That's the uh, the basic things that I learned from from them, and especially how to optimize those kind of potential uh, within the, the individual. Mm. It, it's uh, when when we're, we're talking about uh, transpersonal or, or uh, I mean psychosynthesis, especially, it's actually uh, something that that uh, actually it's a therapeutic therapeutic approach in a clinician, but it can be applied in a setting of in a setting of of a life coaching uh, or executive coaching mm, because okay. uh, the perspective in a transpersonal that my gurus taught me is uh, you have to be positive uh, towards your clients your right. clients have the capability to change their own life mm. they also have uh, their resource their own resource within the, their self especially when we are deepening into their heart. That's right. the key in, in, uh, that I have learned. And right. it's uh, uh, coloring my, my practices uh, every when I met a client. Right. I think you mentioned something there um, that uh, is very important, um, that everyone does have the capability and ability to be better and to be the best version of themselves. But some people, you know, they might think, oh, maybe this is my limit. 
maybe maybe I'm too old now, or maybe I started too early, or or maybe I didn't get the opportunities that other people yeah. got. What would you say to those people as a interpersonal uh, coach here? Okay. Uh, actually, when we, we don't know, uh, when we are uh, on a pessimistic mind, uh, we just not, uh, maybe we are not uh, ready to see our potential. Right. We are not ready to see what capability that I that we can do. Mm. So as a coach, uh, we take a, a position or a role as a partner to help them to understand, hey, what cap capability that you can do, what potential that you have, so you can uh, optimize those kind of resources within yourself. Mm. So uh, as 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 I say, synthesis. Uh, coach, uh, the key is we need to integrate all our all, all of our human aspect. So okay. as a coach, uh, we need to facilitate. As a coach, yeah, we need to yeah. facilitate coach how right. to build uh, the capacity to reorient uh, the lives uh, in the direction of meaning and values. Mm. Uh, this this can happen if the coach has a strong purpose. Uh, as a strong purpose to the future. So mm -hmm. as I, I, I want to say that uh, in, in, uh, in psychosynthesis coaching practice is, we offer the coachee uh, a partnership in, a bu in building a hope actually. So that's, that's why, uh, that's the key, how the client or how the coachee build their willingness mm. to, to okay deepening the, the understand of self. And have you ever met a client or a coachee who, um, who maybe wasn't open to this? Like, you know, when, uh, for example, in my experience in coaching, we need to build that relationship and build that trust. And sometimes the client or the coachee themselves um, they put up some kind of block. Yeah. Like as a psychosynthesis coach, where you're trying to um, really fulfill every aspect, have you ever met that kind of client? And how do you how do you break through their their shield or their defenses? Yeah, of course. Uh, almost. 85% of my clients uh, ha has uh, this kind of barriers. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking the reality of our all aspects uh, need a readiness, needs a willingness from the coachee. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my, uh, my coachee, uh, when he met, uh, when they met uh, the blocking, you know, uh, coaching actually, uh, the concept, basic concept of coaching is we bring people from now to the future. Right. But as a coach, we have to realize that not all of the people are ready. Maybe they are willing, but not ready. Mm. Maybe they are willing, but not ready to bring them from now to the future because of they have a lot of a lot of baggage in their mm. back. So uh, something that we can do is. This is I, I I said this is not a therapeutic process because we are still in here and now. Right. Uh, we help the coachy to see their past, to see, to understand their history. Oh, okay. And then accept their history, so they can release the baggage and then go ahead, move forward. Mm. So it's, it's a simple like that, but. Uh, the process can be very tough. Right, I'm sure. I'm sure when people kind of go back and, um, you know, we all have like baggage, traumatic events in our lives. Yep. And when we bring those up, it brings up a lot of 
memories maybe that we've been trying to suppress That's true. um maybe even emotions it becomes very emotional um have you had that experience where a client just broke down maybe into tears and, yeah. and they're going through all that baggage and then what was the result after that okay the result after that actually they they can accept uh and realize the here and now in the present moment all of their feelings or of their thoughts they uh they can they can be very very present moment that's mm -hmm. the 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 important things right. um, because if our coachee can uh feels in the present moment and their thought not uh, already in the present moment then we can go forward but mm. if they're not in the present moment i thought the coaching uh will not going so smooth or it is not effective right it's it's right. going uh to make the client or the coach in, in a pain uh they will feel so suffer because mm. emotionally psychologically that they, they are not uh ready to move forward Mm. So as a psychosynthesis coach, you need to kind of get them out of the past, bring them into the present, and then prepare them for the future. Is that right? That's right. Wow. When when we have uh, this, uh, when we have the client who have a barriers with the uh, with the past of with their history. Right. Right. And what if they don't have a barrier with the past? Is there a difference in your approach? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Uh, in 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 in, in psychosynthesis, uh, we are not just talking about the problem, but we focus mm -hmm. on the re relation self towards soul, spirit, alongside with physical, emotional experience, thought, mm -hmm. and 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 also mental process. So when when we have a client who doesn't have an issue uh, in the past or who doesn't have a barrier, so we just uh, deepening on how they experience uh, the present moment. So and and then finding the values that they have to prepare uh, sub, uh, to prepare them to get uh, what 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 they want in in the future. Mm. So, uh, in, in, in actually, David, in transpersonal psychology, we know that coaching has a coaching model. You know, right? we right. know grow, and then uh, we know right. uh, still uh, some some kind like that out there. Right. So many coaching model. Right. But in transpersonal, uh, we don't need the coaching model mm. because. Oh. The, the model of the coaching is depend on the client's condition. Mm. So we need to be more, I guess, as a psychosynthetic coach, you need to be more aware of where the client is mentally. Of course. Whereas, on the psychoenergetic level, right. we need to understand it. We need to, to understand in a psych, uh, psychoenergetic level of the a mental state from the, the coachee or the client. Right. Whereas um, some conventional uh, coaching, for example, business coaching or um, or I'm thinking like parenting coaching, and there's a lot of other fields of coaching. They focus more on a certain uh, problem that needs a solution rather than the mental state of that person. Uh, would that be the difference between psychosynthesis and transpersonal compared yeah. to other fields? Yeah, absolutely. Or, or are there other differences as well? Uh, yeah, that's that's the different things. You, you put uh, in a simple words, actually, uh, because in a psychosynthesis, we prepare on a mental state. so uh when their mental state is on a willingness and the readiness is okay and then they will change the behavior right not because drive by the coach 
by but it's their own willingness their their own uh, needs uh, to change uh, the behavior to get what they want to, to be achieved mm. so in, as in, a psycho uh, sorry uh, sorry for interrupting but it's okay. I, i'm a bit curious here so as a psychosynthesis coach it sounds like there's also an element of psychology um and and understanding the basics of psychology so as a psychosynthesis coach um are you only asking like um, deep questions to the coachee or are you actually um, doing like analysis of their psyche at the same time? Yeah, this is a interesting question, David. <laughs> Transpersonal uh, or a psychosynthesis has a unique approach actually. Right. Uh, we hold the process uh, on the philosophical base. Mm -hmm. uh, the, when we do uh, coaching, uh, we have to be focused that when we do is helping people to be the best form of themselves. Right. It's okay. When you, your client feels uh, comfortable with the process and not, uh, up, uh, not getting uncomfortable or, or being pain, just go ahead and in psychosynthesis, uh, I mean, the, the working method has many approaches, David, not mm. only about the asking. Right. Not only about the asking. Uh, we do, so we have so many approach. We have so many techniques uh, like mindfulness and then mm. stillness and movement med meditation. Right. And then um, we have encounter groups or we have an, an inner imagery. Uh, art projects and uh, we have several dozen more it's, right, right. Uh, i i i know uh it's more when we we, we are doing a psychosynthesis we have more an exercise rather than we are we're just asking the process so that's why uh on on a conventional uh coaching process we put a time okay we have an hour uh, with, with clients, we say that, but in uh, transpersonal, we can do that. Mm. Right. Do that. Wow. So, so, so it sounds it sounds like it's uh, there's a lot of different techniques and and I this brings more curiosity to me. <laughs> I want to ask you and go into detail of every technique and and what exactly do you do in these techniques, but. I think I'll save those questions um, for another time. Um, I okay. would like to ask though, however, um, as a psychosynthesis coach, as someone in HR who, who really focuses on developing people, um, what has been the biggest transformation you've seen in your career, in your experience? Okay. I, uh, I using the, sorry, using these techniques that you just mentioned. Yeah. I have uh, an experience when I have to work with, uh, uh, yeah, let, let's say uh, he is an uh, executive vice pre president from mm. one of the uh, textile or garment companies mm. uh, in Indonesia. She has, uh, he has a uh, uh, mental condition that, that you know, uh, ADHD, ADHD in adult. Mm. So that's my client. They run the, in, in, on that position, uh, he can achieve that position because he is uh, the son of the owners. Okay. <laughs> So that's why they can achieve uh, that position uh, so easily. Mm. But how they manage their people is uh, very painful for the team. You know, right. as someone with, with an ADHD, they they very, very quick to change their mind, to change their own. Uh, and that impact to the team and the team is very exhausted. Mm. And for the, them, uh, for himself, he feels unfulfilled. 
because right. no one uh, can can be finished because they they change so quickly. Mm. I decide to accompany him for six months. I'm doing uh, I'm doing coaching every week in the at, at the uh, after after office hour talking and then doing uh, some exercise you know when they when he can put himself in the present moment mm. it changed the way they manage the team uh, sorry he way he he managed the team right. and the team feels what happened he mm. changed so quickly Mm. So, you know, so this, so this, so being able to be present and aware affected a lot of people around him. Yeah, uh, but it's tough to understand what their values, uh, what what his values, what his uh, what is won, uh, what he won, and then what what. Uh, what he make the most uh, fulfilled uh, for the team. That's the focus actually. Mm. So we, uh, I bring him to focus on that and I bring him to identify what, what kind of roles that they have and then synthesize it, uh, all of the roles into one understanding. Mm. So, Actually, this role is uh, uh, this role is exists. Right. Maybe uh, he is as a son, so that so he he don't, he don't want uh, make his parents uh, feelings like disappointed, well. for example. Disappointed, and then uh, he has he has to show that he capable uh, right. as a executive vice president, and then as a person. Uh, he wants to be loved by by the team, by everyone, as most That's, people do. <laughs> yeah, it's a role inside of us. Right. So it's I I I bring him to understand. Hey, you have so many roles that mm. you play in the one in in uh, in the one time. Mm. At the same time, you play so many roles. That why that's why uh, your mind so complicated. Mm. So, uh, I invite him to disidentify with this reality, so they can they can uh, uh, he can so he can show that oh I have so many roles this one this one this one and then uh, I invite him to see that which role that you can play are fit with this situation. So. He has a control, so he he will uh, he learned about the willingness to control. To control what? To control himself. Mm. So Let's I'm see. I'm a bit curious Let's... here with what techniques on the techniques you mentioned about psychosynthesis that you had to use here to get him to that point. Yeah. Uh... This, the technique actually uh, developed by Roberto Asagioli. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the father of uh, psychosynthesis psychology. Mm -hmm. this, the technique uh, is identification and disidentification. Okay. The, Roberto Asagioli actually uh, he 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 invite uh, or or he teach that to be. Uh, to growth, you have to disidentify with your current uh, condition, so you right. can choose which one your capability, your, your potency that can help you uh, to face uh, the challenge in the current condition. Wow, we are not we are not uh, facing a challenge in the future. Right, that's the important thing. Right. I mean, that sounds like a very, sorry, that sounds like a very deep, complicated process. Um, and how, how was it when he was going through that? 
Um, was it a challenge to to get him to, you know, you're you're probably going in very deep into his psyche, into his, um, as you mentioned, into his own self-awareness. Um, how, you know, because sometimes clients, when you take them too deep, they get a bit overwhelmed. So um, are there techniques as a psychosynthetist coach that can help um, perhaps you need to uh, stage how deep you're going into this process? Yeah, actually it's, 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 uh, we, we need to understand this uh, client's mental state. Mm, so okay. we can go through directly, but uh, we can push the process. Right. We, we, can, we can't push, uh, push the process. So we have, uh, as, as a coach, we have to, to know right now, uh, he's ready to go deeper or not. If he, they are not ready, so we have to stop. Right. Give it time for the, for the coach to understand the process, especially to accept that they can go deeper right now. Mm. So okay. that's why we can ask him uh, right. when right. Will, will you will you ready? And then right. or you can you can discuss uh, more with me after you're you're ready. So right. okay. it, it will uh, give a time for, for the uh Gucci actually to think to think more to uh, to feel deeper what happened with, with themselves. Right, right. So, so it's also you're kind of uh, making sure and saying. So, are you are you comfortable going deeper into this? Yeah. And if they say yes, then you dive then into it. it. And if they yeah. say, uh, if they hesitate, then are there are there certain techniques you use to prepare them? Maybe like meditation or or um, some other technique you mentioned um, earlier um, group or some other psychosynthetic techniques that can prepare them to go deeper? Yeah, at the first, actually, we do a mindfulness as the basic, mm. uh, basic things to understand what happened uh, with their bodies, what happened with their feelings, right. what happened with their thoughts. That's the first thing. That's the first skill, actually, that uh, the client should uh, uh, acquire. Right. And the second thing is that we move into the meditation because okay. uh, in a meditation, we can go deeper, yeah. as, especially when we, we, we want to talk uh, or making make a higher connection with our heart. Uh, the, the beautiful one in, in a transpersonal or psychosynthesis is uh, we are talking about heart self intelligence. Right. It's so beautiful. How uh, that's the source of potential, and we 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 can uh, we can address, address uh, this kind of potential. We can uh, optimize this kind of potential when we are on the meditation state. Right. So uh, that's the basic basic skill actually. So that's why uh, you, you're you're right that we need to go step by step, and then the sec uh, second thing is uh, I explained that we start from the mindfulness and then the meditation. It's uh, it, it's always uh, I always doing that mm. before and after the session. Mm. You no, know, uh, it's important. Uh, very important. Uh, it's important. Very important things mm. that that uh, clients should very understand that okay i can have my own time right even in the 24 7 uh, right. they are uh, they have no time but please do that right on every condition especially when they are getting mad with the, with their problem right take a time and do mindfulness or do meditation it, it will clearing their chattering mind 
and right. then they right. can connect with uh, their potential. Right. And and I, I would totally agree with you. It sounds like a very fulfilling process, this psychosynthesis coaching, where you're actually connecting your mind, your soul, your body to fulfill your full potential. And um, it, it also reminds me, though, when you talk about step by step, it's just like kind of your own journey where you learned um, mm -hmm. starting from a clinical psychologist, you went into yeah. industrial um, HR, you, you then found gurus, you went into transpersonal um, coaching, um, uh, what would we say, not experience, but knowledge. And it's kind of the same as a learning journey. Uh, we're learning about ourselves. And each step, we have to take small steps to keep learning and learning and learning. Um, so that's, I think that's a really powerful message and uh, important message also just for anyone out there listening. Um, you, can't, you can't get something immediately. That's right. We have, yeah. we have to... It's a process. We have to take steps, sometimes baby steps, to finally get to our destination. And I think that's something beautiful that you just mentioned there, uh, the way you mentioned it. Um, so I do have another question, um, Coach uh, Supriyadi. Uh, for those people who maybe they're looking to to do this psychosynthetic coaching, but they're hesitating, they're not sure, am I mm -hmm. ready to, am I ready to go into my past and, and face my trauma, face my past baggage? Um, what would you say to those person who are a bit hesitant to engage with, with you or any other psychosynthetic coach? In a simple sentence, I would like to say, experience it first. Mm. The, the first window to find the wisdom of what you feel right now, what you experience, in, uh, what you what your thought uh, right now, is experience it. Mm. That's just, a, that, uh, that's sweet that's, but simple. That's sweet but yeah. simple. <laughs> and it's very if you want to connect it deeply with with yourself and embrace your true potential that aligned uh to the to the whole universe uh yeah we we can't do that without experience it right if you want to connect right. deeply then you, you said that uh even baby step even baby step we need to experience it right from those right. steps we will understand Right. Am, am I ready to go forward or right. I choose to stay here? Right, right. I, I think you put it in a very sweet and simple context is try it. Uh, I mean, it's just like if you're trying a, a new food, for example, that you've never <laughs> tried before, right? You don't just say, hey, I, I, I it looks ugly. It, it looks it doesn't look like it's going to be delicious. And then you try it and you find out, wow, I love this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so the way you we, put we don't it know, is... We don't know if we, 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 uh, we won't try. We don't know exactly. the taste. Uh, we don't know this is sweet or exactly. sour exactly. or hot. Yeah. So just, you... just experience it. Just try it. So you mm. can understand oh what happened with myself uh why i can move forward i have so many plan uh, plan planning in my life but why i can uh, achieve even one uh what uh, one achievement i can uh get it so just try it if you want right. to feel the, uh, how psychosynthesis uh, work Try right. experience. So, so for all the listeners out there, I think that's uh, the best way to put it. Don't be afraid to try, try it, try something new, 
get out there. If you feel that you're that you really want to develop, that you want to learn more, don't be afraid to go out there, experience it for yourself, then make a decision. Is it for you? Is it not for you? Um, uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Coach Supriyadi, for that message. You're welcome. Um, so, you know, we've been talking now. It's almost uh, an hour <laughs> we've been talking. <laughs> and uh, I could keep talking and talking. And, and um, I want to really go into kind of some of the techniques you mentioned. Um, but it would be great perhaps in another session, we can go into some of the more specific things. I think yeah. this is just more of a general uh, introduction. Um, but I have one last question for you that I like to ask all my guests um, at the end. Um, let's say that your time on uh, in this world has uh, come to an end. You've accomplished everything that you set out to accomplish. Um, and now you're going to move on to a better place. Um, however, you can only leave behind two pearls of wisdom for your friends, everyone in the, in the world that you're leaving behind to remember you by. What would be these two pearls of wisdom? Be kind to yourself. That's mm -hmm. the important thing. Uh, it's very important. Um, yeah, the first one is be kind to yourself, be kind to your soul, be kind to your spirit. And the second thing is always uh, understand what what happened in surrounds you. Mm. Somehow they teach you a lot rather than you try to reach something far away from from us. Mm. Those I hope, are very uh, good pearls of wisdom. That's the two pearls uh, that I want to share with with every everyone. Mm. Those are really good pearls of wisdom and. And um, I said that was the last question, but now I'm curious, um, how, how could someone be kind to themselves? What are some examples that people can do to be kind to themselves? Okay. David, how come you can be kind to yourself if you never understand what happened uh, to your body, what happened to your thought what happened to your uh to your uh emotion mm. maybe uh someday i can i can share with you about the wisdom of uh japanese people about how they manage uh, about rasa i would love that people in japanese uh they classified emotion uh, sorry feelings so many feelings in Java, but how come they manage it? They, they can be so calm, uh, they can be uh, so easy going. It's just because they understand all of their, their self. Wow. Self doesn't mean only uh, psychological uh, things, but self is also physical and psychological condition. Right. Maybe so, sometimes I will I will share with you uh, yeah, we, what Japanese wisdom teach us and how how come we implement it into coaching sessions. I, I was just about to say you you've piqued my curiosity even more, and I now I'm like what, hundreds more questions. And um, for 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 the listeners who who do listen to to my uh, podcast. I say this at the end of every podcast that I want to ask more questions, um, but I also, uh, we can save those later for another time. Um, and I hope to be able to have you on as a guest, uh, Coach Supriyadi, um, perhaps um, in the near future or um, uh, when you have time to come back, that would be uh, great. Um, so, um, I, I, uh, 
I'm still curious though, and I want to ask this one more, one more. I promise this will be the last <laughs> okay. one. No problem. What is, what is the difference with being um, good to yourself and <sighs> being selfish? It's totally different. When where when is the line? Like where where do you draw the line with with be I do uh, like you said your pearl of wisdom of be kind to yourself um, and where's that line between being kind to yourself and just being selfish? Uh, simply, David. If you're selfish, you're not connected with the universe. Mm. If you're good uh, uh, with yourself, with the, as a good person, personality or, or whatever uh, we say, the differentiation is we are connected with the universe. So we are connected with the people, with the nature. So we, we don't just think about about ourselves when we selfish we just think about ourselves right how i, I found uh, happiness how i found the uh, comfortable just for us if we selfish right but in the other side uh, uh sorry you said good good uh, uh kind kind to yourself is you let yourself connected you let yourself connected with the whole aspect whole uh, dimension of the universe that's mm -hmm. the uh, the diff, uh, line of uh, the red line between uh, selfish and attend to yourself great um, so yeah for all the listeners out there um, beware of being kind to yourself and there is a difference between being selfish, being kind to yourself. I think uh, Coach Supriyadi explained that very well. Um, so again, thank you, Coach Supriyadi. Um, for uh, those of uh, our listeners or the audience who would like to know more, who would like to connect with you, maybe even engage with you as, uh, as their psychosynthetic coach to um, be able to reach their full potential, mind, body, soul. Um, what's the best way to connect with you? Okay. <clears throat> the first things I would like to uh, red line, uh, if, if you want, or if the listeners want to connect deeply uh, with, with themselves and embrace their true potential, uh, port with conventional coaching approach, willing to explore uh, the real you uh, or the real self to achieve the purpose, uh, then you can connect me uh, through LinkedIn or through basic coach application in, in Android. Uh, it's the simple, simple way, I think, to connect with me. All right, great. So um, for everyone uh, who's listening, who does want to connect, who's ready, um, and serious uh, in their development and in finding their true potential, I will leave the, the link uh, to connect with Coach uh, Supriyadi uh, through LinkedIn and through Visa Coach. Um, it will be in the description, so please look for that. Um, so again, thank you very much for your time, Coach Supriyadi. You're it's welcome, pleasure. David. It's been a pleasure having you, and um, we do hope to have you again in another session to go into some more details. Um, for the for the listeners also, um, if you have comments or if you uh, have questions, please leave them in the comments. And so when when Coach Supriyadi. Um, is kind enough to come join us again we can we can perhaps um bring up some of those comments and answer some of those questions uh so please leave comments and um thank you again for uh, your attention thank you again coach supriyadi um bye bye for now see you at the next session thank you
Bye. Thank you. Thank you.